<laughs> Hello you lot, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again. And for the first time in about three or four weeks, it's a beautiful day, I've got nothing going on, I'm not working, the weather is decent, and you know what that means? The Super Seicento is out for a hoon. And you know what, for once, I'm not gonna do something over the weekend, I'm not gonna fix anything, modify anything, change anything. I'm just going out for a hoon, and I figured let's just stick some cameras in the car and take you with me. So this is what I get up to when I'm not filming. Oh yes. <laughs> I do absolutely love my job, working with cars and filming cars and getting to drive all kinds of awesome cars of all varieties, but this is the one that brings the smile to my face most of all. It's not perfect, it's a bit of a nugget really, but it's my nugget. <laughs> oh, RAV4 Hybrid is just the best thing to be stuck behind and a Nissan Juke as well. Yeah, that's fun. I'd like to iterate at this point that this road I'm on is a 60 mile an hour road and right now I'm stuck behind a RAV4 Hybrid and a Nissan Juke doing Let's be generous and say 25. We started the year out with all the big plans as usual after we'd failed and then subsequently passed the MOT and there was gonna be all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Then COVID occurred, which put paid to a lot of the plans I had for shows and traveling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then the GTV arrived, which meant I was doing loads of stuff on that. This was then stuck three hours from where I lived uh, because of lockdown. Then when I finally got it back, I was living from home and working from home, which meant that I just didn't have the time to spend on this. Then I've been traveling a lot for work. We have got a few bits done, of course. We got the rear seat delete done. I got some more interior improvements done. Only just last week, we got that lovely fire extinguisher mounted. I've still done a good few bits to this car this year. Fitted the flock dash, new steering wheel, all that kind of stuff. But progress has been slow, unfortunately, due to the unique circumstances I found myself in. And that is one of the reasons why I thought, rather than do a video of just tinkering a little bit and pieces, because there are a few things I've got to do, let's just get out and enjoy it for a bit. I've already made my mind up that this car is coming off the road at the end of October. I'm taking it off the road, putting it into storage in the workshop over winter, because I'm not gonna enjoy it in the winter. It's too damp, it's too cold, the roads are rough, it's gonna ruin the car, there's not much fun to be had. So I'm taking it off the road to do some major improvements to this car over the winter. Suspension stuff, braking stuff, I mean, brake stuff, Not we're not gonna brake stuff, but you know what I mean. And of course, finally making this thing properly fast, but that is all to come. So for now, I thought I'd just take you on a little B-Road bash and celebrate actually driving this car for once, not just talking about it or fixing on it. And this car is just in its element here. It's tiny, it's compact, responsive. Leave it in fourth and let it just pull. And because this suspension is so good, I'm not upset by all the bumps. Just keep the power on. I don't have much, but I can use all of it. To be honest, I've been B-Road bashing this car a lot over the summer. Even though you haven't seen it on camera, I've been enjoying it a hell of a lot. Getting to grips once again with some of my favorite roads in between filming stuff and fixing stuff. It's just been nice to have some fun with my little buddy again. And that has highlighted a few things that need sorting. The rear shocks, for example, have had it, which is probably why you can notice me bouncing around a lot. The rear end will pretty much just kangaroo over any bump I go over, so new rear shocks are on the way. I would like to tighten up some of the bushes because the front end is not quite as razor sharp as I'd like it, so hopefully some poly bushing type stuff happening. And the brakes, they work perfectly well, but the pedal feel is not really good enough. So there are gonna be some fixes and some mods coming to improve on that. But for now, Let's just drive it fast. <laughs> this car is so eager. It's so excitable on a road like this. And you're just encouraged in that little Fiat way, like I said all those years ago when I first unveiled this car, to push on. Pin it down here. Those tires are so grippy, so I've got the confidence in it. Those Falcons 195 profile, so I've got plenty of rubber to lean on and let the front end do its thing. <laughs> Let's nip down here, shall we? Bit bumpy through here, so I'm gonna take it easy. There we go. To all the people that have been saying I ought to lower this car more, 
come and have a look at the roads I drive on and then tell me I ought to lower it more. There have been people saying, why don't you put 15s on this thing with skinnier profile tires and drop it a little bit. Two points to make there. Number one, this isn't a stancy show car. This is a B-road bashing hooligan. I just happen to care about how it looks, but I'm not gonna slam it. And number two, because I've got a fat tire sidewall, which means I've got a bit of extra rebound, and I've got decent ground clearance, so I'm not bottoming out everywhere, I don't have to worry about scraping the car. I can concentrate on just having fun, which actually is what this car is all about. It's a grin machine. Oh, so good. Properly on it now. Yeah, you can tell the car's bouncing a little bit. Those rear shocks are not happy, but... <laughs> Oh, just a little squirt past the peloton here. Yes! Ah, oh. and here we see one of the worst bits of the countryside, horses. They don't pay road tax, and they don't pay any kind of insurance, and they don't even clean up their horses' poo, but I have to slow down for them. Nice. It might sound boring to just drive on the same roads every time you go for a hoon, but if you do, you get used to them. You get to know all the little undulations in the road. You get to know the points where people will just pull out on you. You get to know roughly the points where you're gonna find horses, like back there. And when you know the road, you can drive to reflect it. And that makes it all the more fun. Oh, God, this is such an eager little thing. Sometimes it's easy to get so tied up in a project car and spend all your time fixing on it and modifying it and spannering that you forget it's a car. You're supposed to drive it. You're supposed to have fun with it. And it's what we're doing. This is what having a little B-road bashing nugget is all about. It's bouncy, it's rattly, it's unrefined. I'm not actually going that quickly. And non-car people would say I'm an absolute idiot. Why am I driving this and why am I not out here in my modern mini company car because I'd be going quicker I'd be more comfortable and I wouldn't be making any excuses for anything but this is the car that makes me smile this is the one that I want to get up early and have a hoon with someone's having a bonfire here but that's not the only fire going on and I don't mean catching fire but I do have the extinguisher if I did it ain't fast it ain't refined and it ain't luxurious but I love it my mad little nugget, so much fun. Oh, I could just drive this all day. And I wouldn't be having this much fun in a Golf R around here or an RS3, because I'd be going so blisteringly quickly and yet not actually be doing much driving, so to speak, that it would be both boring and annoying because I wouldn't be able to use all the power. This, I've only lifted off about once. There's another horse box, I believe, so. We will let the horsists come through. You enjoy your horseying activities. I'm gonna go and play with my horsepower. Oh yes. Sorry, second gear, that was a bit aggressive. <laughs> oh yes. God, this is good. Oh, it's so much fun. This is why I'm into cars. This is it right here. Slowing it right down here. Heel and towing like a boss. Oh, yes. And you know what? You can make any jokes you like about Fiat's being fragile and frail and unreliable. Here's the fact. I don't drive this car sympathetically. I punish the engine, I slam it into gear, I'm hard on the clutch, and it just takes it, touch wood. I've never broken anything on a B-Road bash in this thing. It's never overheated. I've never broken anything at all. It's tough, it's resilient. It's an aggressive little puppy dog that wants you to wring its neck and just play with it. It'll bite your ankles, but it's bloody good fun to play with. Ooh, there's a Sunbeam Alpine. Very nice. Bit of bonus car spotting for you. If a valve suddenly flies out the bonnet, I reckon you'll know why. 
Oh God, this car is just amazing. And I love it so very, very much. This might be one of the last drives I do this year in it before it goes into storage. And when it comes out, it's gonna be bigger and better than ever before. Oh God, I'm well aware I'm just rambling and I think this Peugeot is gonna put paid to my fun a little bit. So let's round it off there, I reckon. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Catch you very soon with some more mad mods on this mad little car. Catch you soon and have a good one. Woohoo!